Spoiler alert, Slash the Paradise encourages viewers to watch these horror films before listening to our show. Danny and Lance will go through everything, including filmmaking, dialogue, characters, and even full scene breakdowns when we get excited. Enjoy the show. Hey, Slashers, welcome back to part two of Slashers Paradise Scream. We're going to get right back into the conversation, but remember, fill your tiki cups with whatever you'd like. The slash word for this episode and the last episode is Scream. So, so... We're dealing with phones right off the bat. The phone rings and, you know, she answers it. And, yeah, she she ends up having a full-on conversation. Yeah, totally. She's just ready to have, like, a night. She's going to watch some horror films. She's uh, popping some popcorn. popcorn. Like, it's just a night home. It's a high school kid at home, but it's Drew Barrymore. But I did appreciate this scene so much because of the progression, right? So now oh. they have a back and forth and they're talking to each other. And Ghostface or the, vo- the, the mysterious caller... Uh, is asking pretty much what what are you going to do she's like oh i'm about ready to uh oh because she's like he's like what's that noise she's like popcorn you're making popcorn uh-huh it's always mm. that uh-huh they'd like oh uh-huh, drew yeah and she's so cute right and that's why i think that that moment was so you know impactful of her not <laughs> making it past the the title card but anyway uh he starts the conversation by saying oh i only watch Oh, I only eat popcorn when I'm going to watch a movie. And she's like, well, I'm getting ready to watch a scary movie. And then I'm in because I want to be in that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be talking to this man. Cause he's like going to ask her, what's your favorite scary movie? And in, I'm shit. You not Lance. I'm in the audience, little, little shithead, just like this. Halloween. <laughs> just like saying my answer. Halloween. And she pulls out the, the kitchen knife. And says that her favorite scary movie is yeah. Halloween. Halloween. She starts playing with the knives. And it's just such, at that point, that's when you know, like, oh, they know. They know. They yeah, know what like, we know. We're, they're us I mean, writing this. Movies talking, horror movies talking about other horror movies. It's like you're almost, you can't, because it's like, it's like breaking the fourth wall. You're not supposed to acknowledge. You're right. supposed to still be in the realm, even though they're not all connected, unless you're Freddy versus Jason. You're supposed to kind of still be... Yeah, but why? You know what I, I mean? know. Like, there was no was reason so, for that, that Like unless so, it was like a competitive thing. That's yeah. why when Scream comes out, you're like, oh, this is ho- the whole new world. And this scene just you get, close your eyes. It gets you going so fast because, like you said, the progression of it, gets terrifying quick Mm -hmm. you know like what is the line that she says that opens up the whole chaos well first of all i should say like eighth of all at this point i'm sorry guys but he you know wes craven's behind it right so they get to talk about nightmare on elm street a little bit and it's like well the first one was great but the rest sucked because you know, yeah, maybe we'll get into that. Great horror into. movie references coming up left coming, and right. Yeah. But he has a faux pas. He has a little slip up, a slip of the tongue a little bit. And he says uh, he wanted to know her name. And she's like, why do you want to know my name? Do you want to take me out on a day? She's playing around. And he says, I want to know who I'm looking at. And the music and the moment shifts. Mm-hmm. What and did you like, say? I want to know who I'm talking to. That's not what you said. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no but it's it's panic mode like yeah oh shit like i definitely heard that now i need to start locking doors and looking around she turns on the lights like she does the smart thing right she Would turns you say Lance, you turn on the outdoor lights that she locked her doors and then bolted the windows well she starts to but then she turned on the lights well you turn yes I mean, that, that's okay for everybody that needs to be aware. You turn on your outdoor lights so that you can see out. You turn off your indoor lights so that they cannot see in. Classic but move. Classic. She flips on the lights to look outdoors and the, the chaos begins. There's a knock at the front door. There's- yeah, but he says like, what? And she's like, uh, I got to go. And she's like, well, well, hey, I thought we were going to go out. Yeah. And you start right, right before he, she hangs up, you hear his voice get a little more sadistic and a little bit more Agitated, you know, angry. Yeah. Don't hang up on me. Yeah. Right. And she hangs up and he calls back. And you could tell she's bothered. She's getting bothered by it. And she's trying to keep herself composed. And she's before she was like, hello. Right. Mm-hmm. And now she's like, yes. Yeah. She also says she doesn't have a boyfriend, which she does. Like she wanted to play up the flirtation a little bit. Yeah, she's having a good, she's, a, you know, she's a high school girl. She's living for kicks. You know, she's having a good time. Yeah, I no, mean, no when problem. I was in high school, I was living for kicks, man. Yeah. No problem with that. But the, the, 
the agitation is in his voice. He's calling back and it's progressing. It's getting scarier and scarier and scarier. And so, right. Calls back. I, I have I, this movie is imprinted on me almost more. So no, don't ever say that. Well, What's wrong with you. I was about to hit myself uh, <laughs> as much as Halloween, but she called, he calls back and she's like, shit. Yes. I told you not to hang up on me. What do you want? To talk. Well, dial another number. Hangs up. And she's like, if this dude calls again, I'm about to lose my shit. And I love this. She was perfect for this because, you know, maybe there isn't anybody on the other side of that receiver when, mm-hmm. when Drew Barrymore is in that scene. Maybe she's just having to pause and maybe somebody's off camera giving her the lines. You never know. Like, you just, it's so great. She does such a great job. Finally, she's at her wits end. She answers it. She goes, listen asshole and he says no you're gonna listen basically and raises his voice don't you listen to me you little bitch you hang up on me again and i've got you like a fish understand <laughs> yeah yeah that part i love that part me too my brother and i laugh at that part so much not that threat that's sadistic it's the <laughs> yeah it's like weird it's like a weird way to like end a threat you're almost like, oh, yeah, yeah, you, it, you're scared, aren't you? It's the confirmation of like, yeah, this is real kind of a thing. I love that scene. That that actually makes me scared of him at that point. It's not funny to me. It's like, ooh, he's like, he's pushing it in now. Yeah. Like, it's real. Yeah, and he, you're like, holy shit, who is this mysterious caller who just flipped a 180 on us, basically, and now he's going to really drive it up to, you know, almost to the edge of the, tracks basically yeah and me being the horror fan i enjoy this part because i'm like oh i could have survived this Mm. because what he tells her he's like i'm gonna play a game with you i ask you a question and if you get it wrong you live and if you get it wrong you die right if you get it right yeah yeah well that's yeah so uh, he's like, come on. It, it, he's, oh man, it's, it's, please watch it guys. This is such a great movie and we're going to gush about it so much because of these moments that are just like, it's basically like, like someone took a, you know, that, that, that stamp, that rolly stamp. Mm-hmm. And it's just like scream on this side of my head. Halloween is basically here. Yeah. And I think like Texas chainsaw is here and like Jason's here. Right. And I like nightmare somewhere else. It's all over. It's all imprinted on me, folks. If you could go with me on that little journey. But now he's saying, I'm going to give you a quiz. If you pass this quiz, you live. If you don't, you die. She's like, no, I don't want to play. She, he's like, all right, well, if you don't want to play, your boyfriend's going to die. She's like, uh, you what? And she sees that her boyfriend's tied up outside. Right, right in front of the pool, tied up by tape. He's big and he plays football and he's going to kick your ass. His name wouldn't happen to be Steve, would it? Ooh. Blondie. Oh, my <laughs> God, dude. Like, uh, and there he is. He's wrapped up. Like, he's not going to help you at this point. So now you got to have to play the game. You know that the killer's outside. You know that you're screwed. You know that your boyfriend is tied up. He's not going to be any help. You're out in the middle of nowhere, which Ghostface or the caller says. Like, yeah, because she's like, I'm going to call the cops. He's like, oh, my God. They'll never call make the cops. It. I'll never get here in time. Right. You ever seen a movie? We're in the middle of nowhere. Am I hitting it? By the way, am I hitting it at all? You're getting there. You're getting there. You're warming up, but it's gonna it's gonna get there by the end of the show. You think? Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. we're we're like 45 minutes in, and oh my god, we're in the first scene. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! So <laughs> we're we're gonna get there, but so this scene, the production part of this scene, yeah. and we'll we'll continue on um, with the Steve part, but the production part of the scene, the production was a very. Uh, concerned about the the production of this movie at this point okay so they cut this scene the 13 minutes of this scene really fast while shooting and sent it to miramax to say this is what we got Oh, like the dailies yeah well they were watching the dailies and that's what concerned them so oh. they made a very quick edit of these of this 13 minutes that they they shot with drew barrymore sent it and miramax went okay do you, do you need any more money or <laughs> Like it was that nice. good and effective and different from everything else that was coming out that they went, okay, you're fine. You're fine. Go ahead and go ahead and do what you're going to do. Hell yeah. So, so we got Steve on the back patio. We're doing the trivia. All right, Lance, I'm going to ask you the trivia and see if you and, or you, the audience can pass the trivia. First thing he asks, name the killer in Halloween. I don't want to. Come on. It's your favorite movie. He wears a mask. Michael, Michael Myers. Yes. Very good. 
Now for the real question. No. Come on. Steve's counting on it. <laughs> We've seen this movie, I think, like once. Oh. Uh, <laughs> name the killer in Friday the 13th. No, no. No, no. Actually, she's so pumped because she got the first one right. And she's like, fuck it. I know what's up. And she jumps right into it. She's like, Jason, Jason, it was Jason. I'm sorry. That's the wrong answer. Yeah, folks. Friday the 13th, the de detail, the what devil's in the details. Yeah. Who is the killer in Friday the 13th? Put it in the comments. Are we going to wait? We're going to wait 13 seconds. 13? We're done. Okay. Who is the killer in Friday the 13th? Is it Jason? Nope. Eh. Eh, wrong. He didn't say Friday the 13th, part two, part 3D, the final chapter, the franchise. part five, part six. I'm looking at your TV set right now. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that. He said Friday the 13th. The, and she the was first so film. confident about it being Jason. She was wrong. Pobrecita, she was wrong. It's actually Jason's mother. And again, the awareness of fans like us. We're the ones that would get that question. Oh, I knew it in the theaters. A, I knew the answer. A casual fan, that is a trick question, too. You think of the entire franchise at this point. It's 1996. We're at Jason Goes to Hell. Yeah, and maybe. Yeah, that was like early 90s. So that's that's where we're at at this point. You the whole Friday franchise 13th, has been out. That's Jason. Even when I was talking about stamping on my head. Yeah. You know, Friday the 13th is Jason, but it, it, not, the devil is in the details. Like I said, not the first film. He said... Friday the 13th, he did not say part two or whatever, so he got her, and he's like, good look, good thing for you, there's a bonus round, but poor Steve, I'm afraid he's out, and he guts him. Yes. Uh, I don't, okay, I have the version where you don't see his entrails fall out. So you don't have the NC-17 rating. Mm -mm. Okay, my old VHS, which I am desperately looking for, has the NC-17 cuts of everything, uh, I no longer have that. I have the rated R cut. What I love about this scene is you can hear it happening before you see what's happening. So you go oh. over to Steve and you can hear slice, 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 and thump. <laughs> That's not fair, man. They gut Steve. Spoiler. If you watch they gut him. If you watch the movie, you will see the hole of his that is his yeah. entrails. But what you see in this unrated version, and I've seen it before, you see his intestines and stuff falling out of him. They plop out onto the ground next to him. He's deader than dead, and you see his guts plop out. That had to be cut to get the R rating. Goodness gracious. You can't even find it, right? Nowadays, they don't. Like I said, it. it's on that VHS. I have not seen a digital cut of that yet. But, <gasps> and, there, and it's in every single kill. This movie had to be cut left and right to get down to an R rating because the the MPAA yeah, just yeah. said no. NC-17, well, like it took, I think, a month and a half to get down to the R rating. My goodness. And it took... it, uh, And that's because there's like no... There is no nudity in the movie either. Like no. that, that, that's... Go go figure. Ne that's never... It could be gratuitous nudity and that's never actually a, contrib a contributing factor to the rating. But blood and guts... That'll get you banned. Well, and some of it's the reaction or how they die. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll get to Kenny man or cameraman Kenny. Uh, they cut part of his scene just because of his reaction was too real. So W Earl Brown, man. That guy's so awesome. that's, I mean, that's what happened is they were just gutting this movie and saying, cut, 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 cut. Or are you going to get the NC? And that is like the death warrant of any movie. If you put yeah. that in. Unless it's showgirls then you can just keep going. <laughs> but so, Let's continue on with this scene, though, right? Yeah, we're so, still going. She, yeah, Steve, she's she sees him die. I mean, like, what would that do to you? Okay, and now, you know, it's time for the bonus question, and she's like, what is it? Oh, my gosh, she's, like, crying, Podesita. She's, like, so done, and she's crying, and she's crying, Lance, and then what's the question? I'm like, all right, he's going to give her a Freddy question. He's going to uh, give her uh, a Hellraiser question. Let's get ready, a Candyman. Let's go, let's go, let's go, and what's the question? What door am I at? <laughs> I know we're going real now. It's back into the real world of like, no, this is a real situation. I'm I mean, gonna, I'm going to kill you. That question can only be asked. <laughs> asked. <laughs> Ask. That question can only be asked at a big house like that. Because if they ask me that, I live in an apartment. What door am I at? The one. But he gets very specific. There are two doors here. The front door and the patio door. The two main doors. Because there was like windows and there's a side door. And I'm at the closet shit. door, you know? That's yeah. So he he makes it very specific. What door am I at? The f there's two main doors to the, the house. Front door, the back door. 
And she's just hysterical at this point. She can't answer it. Fast forward. Crash, bang, boom, door through the window. Yeah. The chase is on. Yeah. So chase scene, and it's a great chase scene. But here's the cool thing about the chase scene is that, like, he gets to her, but she fights him off. And while that's happening, her parents get home, and they're pulling up, and there are lots of... Uh, folks, if we went scene by scene, there would be too much to talk about. But I do want to talk about a specific part in this scene that is... Uh, I love homages to... Uh, you know what I'm going to say. I love homages to other uh, movies. Uh, her parents get home. She's struggling with the with the killer. She can't scream out for help. She like has no voice. She's like, she because she's already been stabbed right, by that point. Right. But she's she's definitely fighting right. But the they get into the house and the, she's in the outside. The parents get into the house and there's like the the smoke detectors going off because her jiffy pop is burning and uh you know they're looking for her and stuff and you know. They don't find her, and they see that it's broken and stuff. And what is the fu- the the husband tells the wife, "Get in the car, drive down to the Mackenzies." And I was like, "The Mackenzies! <laughs> that is who Laurie tells uh, uh, Tommy and Lindsay to run to." I want you to go down the street to the Mackenzies' house. I want you to tell them to call the police. Right? She's dead. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, the Mackenzies! They moved, and now they're like." Another screwed up neighbor. <laughs> Another pale face killer. I mean, that was just the stuff like that is cool. Mom goes outside. She's because she's going to call the police, but she she hears that the phone is still off the hook and she could still hear Casey in case he's dying. And she's like, oh my God, I can hear. And then the, the line gets cut off. That's when the father says, drive down to the Mackenzie. She goes outside. She sees Casey Becker, Drew Barrymore hanging from the tree, guts out and screams the most, one of the most blood curdling screams like that actress nailed it. Like Mm -hmm. that was a great scream. It was like, I think it was been chopped up and like used in like a lot of trailers and such, but she screams to bloody murder and they, it's like a fast sort of rack focus ish zoom in on Casey's dead body. And then you get the title. Right. Yeah. Or you get the title before all this. No, it's it's right after this. Like you you have this blood curdling scream and that's your opening. Like we're not. That's the opening, Danny. Like this whole scene was the opening. Certain parts of the scene that I love were the reveal of the killer in the smoky house. You kind of see him like running by in the robes and then he flashes up. Uh, the big thing was why didn't she just throw the phone at her parents to get their attention? Right, but right. There's because she didn't, you get her mom gets to hear her being killed. Ooh, how fun. over the fo- Ooh, how fun! Yeah, over the phone she hears Casey being killed, and she has she's a great actress. I mean, I think the mom in this scene is so great because she's like Casey, you know, it's like baby, baby, not my girl. You know, she she really sells it, and I think that's what I'm saying is the movie never feels like a comedy because of these scenes, these real moments. And uh, Casey's death, her entrails are out. She's hung up on a tree. That was actually one of, based on one of the kills from the Gainesville Ripper. So a lot of those real world elements are actually intertwined into the deaths, the death scenes of this movie. I mean, folks, wow. What a way to start. Cool. And that took us a minute to get to. And uh, I don't know about you, Lance, but I, I personally don't want to rob people of us just cutting up and going scene by scene in which we... That was an important one, though. Yeah, no, that is the important one. And and we want you all to know that we do love to talk about these scenes in depth, the ones that really stick out. And it's funny because I can say, oh, but this scene, oh, but this scene. And it's like, there, it's, it's a very good movie. Mm-hmm. And I think you have to know the difference between having the technology that we have today yes. versus not. Mm-hmm. versus getting it when it was brand new introduced. I I used to get calls, you know, and not know who they were. And then you like, you're on the phone for like 15 seconds. You're like, wait, who is this? You know, like now you get a phone call and it's like, you know, the caller ID is on there or yeah. you don't answer. Like you have cell phones, you know? So like, anyway, you, you're, there was a phone book. Are you kids? There were phone books that your phone number was listed. So anybody could call you. Yeah. Anyway, what's really interesting about the technology part is Sydney's first interaction with Ghostface. She loses her phone or whatever. She doesn't have a phone accessible, but she goes on her computer and calls 911. Right, because the internet is is coming up. It is well, yeah, I think 94, 95 is when the internet really started. Like for the so, consumer, the co- right. internet was very much, you know, alive and, and as far as a thought process in the 80s, mm-hmm. right? But 
it as being a consumer used or like a, a you know average person used entity or, or tool uh it's starting to really you get the AOL discs from Walmart you know yeah. AOL 2.0 3.0 all that shit yeah so uh she yeah she's on her computer and she's got like I don't even I, I wondered why she had this why did it's like it's that it's a deaf program for deaf people to to use the phone right I did not know that. That's what it says in the top when she ha- okay. So this is not the immediate scene after, but when Sydney Prescott played by the gl- <laughs> gl- <laughs> Nev Campbell, who I'm gonna gush about because I gotta, I gotta talk about Nev. Somebody tell me what the- Nev Campbell sounds like. Okay, that was <laughs> Parks and Rec. Anyway, um, she's yeah. So when she has a that interaction with oh, interaction when she's being chased by Ghostface. She has the computer screen at the top. It says Def Con, Def something, D E A F. I never noticed that. And it's that. something specifically. Up, I think the program is intended for that. I was like, why would she have that? But you know, it did came. It did come into play because she does get to call nine one one before Ghostface does disappear from her. Yeah. Um, Gosh, there's so much good stuff to talk about in this movie. I know. Then we get the throwback, which we meet Billy for the first time. It's a throwback directly to Nightmare on Elm Street and the Johnny Depp character. He comes through the window. And I, yeah, I mean, we don't want to go scene through scene. We want to talk about. I identify with Billy in one thing he does say in that scene specifically. It has to do with the exorcist. Of course it it does, because every time a horror movie is on cable, whether it's TNT, TBS, um, anything in between that is censored, I won't watch it. Yeah, same here. This is what we just talked about with uh, April Fool's Day is right. because there's not much to actually edit out. Yeah. That movie aired a lot, so a lot of but people got to watch it on TV. What's the point of putting those movies... Uh, exposure. No. And, yeah, somebody's going to watch it. Okay, well, so- there's people that aren't like us that don't know or can't handle it, so they're, they're going to watch those movies. Okay, there's a like, good story to a lot of horror films. Yes, but like AMC's, well, AMC does Fear Fest, right? Mm-hmm. And they put a lot of those movies on there, but like they're edited. AMC is a premium cable package program. Can I say another P word? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I've never saw the point folks of editing movies that are like intended to not be edited to put on. Cause like, okay. If you edit an F word here and F word there in like a blockbuster movie, like speed or something, uh, that's one thing. But if you, if you're putting the exorcist on cable, a lot of the things are going to be edited out. And that's what Billy Loomis says, you know, because that is Sydney's boyfriend, right? And he's like, I was at home and I was watching uh, The Exorcist. Was the on. Exorcist. All that, and it, got us, it, it got me thinking about us. And she's like, it did? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, you remind me of The Exorcist. What? Well, it's just like that movie, scary movie. Like there's sometimes where they did such a great job in the, the comedy scary movie where I, I started to intertwine their reaction to scream so much because they really touch on that so well. But anyway, yes. The, uh, the exorcist, the exorcist. Like, does this little thing folks with, uh, with his fingers. He kind of just like, cause Billy's the cool kid. He's got the little bangs going okay. on. I couldn't relate to Billy's hair because I was so jealous. I know you Lance, oh, okay. under that hat have a very much Billy, you know, antenna sort of thing going on. If you wanted to, if your hair was, it's long what long. I always wanted when, because it was the nineties, Danny, that's what was in. Would you think you don't think I wanted it? I know you wanted it's it. It's not you in my about, DNA. You talked about the part that juggernaut had. You I loved wanted it. it. I, and that's the, re- <laughs> I have a child, you know, <laughs> that's the reason I remember the Billy Zane stuff. That that's was, a, that is not in my DNA. If I cho- and I have before chosen to grow out my hair, man, yeah. and all it does is poof. <laughs> it just poofs, man. It's not. I end up looking like uh, Kenny, the the camera operator. The camera. From, <laughs> just a lot of business in the. <laughs> it's not fair. He okay so. His hair is a mix between, and I hope it, by this time the the image has has come out. You know, here in the Slashes Paradise, so yeah. you all can see. It's very much, yeah. Oh my god, I pushed it out of my face. I, I'm, I'm teen. I'm angst. I'm, I'm Nirvana. It's all all this stuff, but it's like there's gel in it. There's product in it, but then there's also grease. He has not, you know, washed his hair in ages. It, yeah, it's definitely, he definitely has to take care of it to get it to that point. Because the bangs are kind of stuck together. I'm telling you. But it just works for the guy in the 90s. It's like when Selena would do the, 
No. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. It's the same idea. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you know, we get introduced that that uh, Sydney is the goody. You know, she's the she Nev Campbell's the goody goody. Mm-hmm. Uh they're talking about how, you know, the relationship hasn't really gone anywhere because of blah blah blah. Uh they just allude to like stuff has happened. So like they used to they started off really hot and heavy. You know, he's equating it to ratings and movies. And uh yeah, she's like, No, I have an underwear rule. So yeah, so she's the she's the Lori Strode. Yeah. Sydney Prescott. But let me talk really quick about Nev Campbell. She, her, and Jennifer Love Hewitt. Whew. Oh, okay. Yeah, that yeah. is prime '90s for Danny mm, crushes. Okay, along with Danielle Harris, who is the goat, right? The goat, <laughs> greatest of all time. I know. It's just you laugh. Go ahead. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> So, Nev Campbell uh, is, I think it's the first, I mean, this is my first time really seeing her in this movie. And it's just like, this is going to be strictly for the people watching. I'm going to try and recreate what her and Jennifer Love Hewitt can do. That is just, I, Caitlin said it was a sign of the times, uh, that type of actors, which is fine. Uh, but it's that, and I, maybe you know what I'm talking about, Lance. It's this, uh, it's like a they do a squint with their eyes and then kind of yeah. like half smile. It's like a, you know, yeah. it's uh-huh. weird. They oh, I, even me right now. If you guys saw that, I'm sure you guys are laughing your ass off because I look stupid. But they can do it, and she does it in this movie. Um, uh, she, uh, Nev Campbell does. She definitely does it in Scream too. But it's like right before a kiss, usually, that her and Jennifer Love Hewitt can do it. Jennifer Love Hewitt does it in Can Hardly Wait. Nev Campbell does it in here and in Scream 2. But it's that, like, she, you know, let's just say that this microphone is the lips, right? And she's getting right there, and she's about to, and she's just like, it's, ah, I can't, I can't. I can really, I, I, it's just, it was, I would see it, and I would crumble. I would crumble on the floor. I would turn into cordon blue on the floor. <laughs> just, I was done. And she was a huge crush on my Nev Campbell. And then I, even then, I didn't want anything bad to happen to her. So even even extra, I was ready to, you know, this movie was excellent for that. I agree with the the Jennifer Love Hewitt side of this. But from this movie, for me, I'm into the alternative girls. Of course you are. Rose McGowan. Hey. Hey. Uh, jawbreaker. Scream. She was my 90s queen. I mean, I think. Uh, Is this when she was dating uh, Marilyn Manson and, and dressed that, that was, way? That was that was Jawbreaker. That was 1999. But the, the red carpet dress is what I'm saying. Yes. Mm-hmm. I like my alternative girls. That Rose McGowan was the one. And she's got the fake bleached hair, which I was kind of bummed about. But, you know, Nev's got the, the darker brunette hair. So we need the blonde girl. Uh, and Drew Barrymore's already out, so we, sure. we gotta have her. So Rose McGowan was my girl in this one, dude. I mean, you and talked about it earlier. Oh, keep going, please. No, no, no. That, that's my gush session. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure you you just don't want to get in trouble? That's what your thing is. No, we're at an hour. I need to, we need to keep going. Okay. <laughs> yes. No, I don't know. I my my fiance knows, and she knows my my crush on Rose. So we're we're good. Crush on Rose. Crush on Rose. You got Rose. I got Nev. And uh, every, apparently every girl in the 90s. But look, this this cast was so powerful. I think everyone filled their role very well. We talked about Rose McGowan. We talked about Nev Campbell. We talked about Skeet Ulrich. We got to mention two more in this group of friends that are very important. We talked about the man recently. Matthew Lillard. In 13 Ghosts. Yes. Matthew Lillard is in here. And quite frankly, a lot of people's most iconic. It's, it's, it's a tie between Stu Mocker and I think Shaggy for him. Ooh, yeah. Okay. I think Shaggy's more obviously. But uh, like, for me, it's Stu. But no, yeah. no, no. But like, like you know, because you know how Jeff Goldblum got like this. Like after a point, he became bigger, and it was like the the myth of Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Matthew Lillard's going through that too, where he's yeah. like, you know, Matthew Lillard always understood the assignment, sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, he's in Hackers, and that was like ninety four, ninety five, yeah. or something like that. So like he's he starts to show up in movies you didn't even know you were watching him in, and you then know, he so. shows up at Best Buy, and you don't even open the goddamn door. Matthew, I'm so sorry once again. Um, if Matt- you don't know, if you're watching or listening, and you don't know why I'm apologizing, Matthew Lillard, go listen to Thirteen Ghosts. Matthew, I have a whole story, Matthew Lillard. I'm so sorry. We're big fans. So anyway, uh, along with Jamie Kennedy, yeah, who had a project, uh, Jamie. <laughs> 
Yes, he did. Stupid. <laughs> that wasn't even a good reference. The Jamie Kennedy Project. Remember that? that yes, uh, I okay, do. Okay, okay, yes. we're going on. Jamie Kennedy plays um, Randy, who, and I got to ask this, man. And I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay if you want to give me the real answer. I'm all right. Mm-hmm. Randy in this movie is the all knowing horror geek who works at the video store and is super into horror and all this stuff and knows the rules and is the guy who's like, Oh, have you seen this movie? Have you seen this movie? Am I Randy? You are Randy. If he survives scream Two. spoiler alert. So I'm Randy because I'm, I'm that guy, right. Who knows all the specifics. You got to set the rules. I mean, I got to, you know, you're the one that knows, but at the, no, because at the parties, I was Randy introducing them, and then I put the movie, and then I'm exactly. over there being Stu. What? Stu? Yeah, you know, Stu was kind of like, yeah. Man. You were you were Stu throwing the parties, yes. but then you were also Randy, who's like, okay, everybody needs to go sit down and watch the movie now. Yeah, I, that you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're okay, the both. You're two of them, but you're mostly Randy. If the, <laughs> he works at a video store, Danny, oh, come on, I you wish, kn- dude. You know, oh. you would have liked to do that. And their VHS is at this point, and still. they go into the video store, folks. They go there, and you could see sort of like, I mean, it's a kind of haphazardly put together. But did you notice? Not okay. Just so you all know, when you watch these movies, nothing is not done on purpose. Everything is done on purpose. So there is a quick shot right when Randy, okay. People are being murdered and they're playing a little bit of a who did it, who's done it, who is the prime suspect or whatnot, right? Um, Stu comes up to Randy, says, are you going to make it to my party? Because they're throwing a party that night. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to make it, obviously. And he's like, oh, look, Billy, who's been the most, who is the most obvious suspect has been, you know, already kind of ID'd by the police, but he was able to get away with it or, you know, got released because he didn't, they didn't have enough evidence. It's hanging out in the horror section. And then Randy kind of talks about, you know, if the cops watch prom night and I love things like that because they're like still being meta in the sense of like breaking Very, the fourth wall, talking yeah. about things that shouldn't exist. Right. These guys shouldn't know about horror movies because they're in a horror movie. Well, not really. So there's this cutaway where, or yeah, like a, a cut, to a reaction shot of everybody in the movie in the video store because Randy loses his shit. He's like, everyone's a suspect. He loses it. And they when they cut, do you see there's a poster Jamie Lee. of Jamie Lee Curtis in uh Mother's Mother's Day. Mother's or, Day or Mother's or Mother's Boy or something like that. I think it was Mother's Day. Anyway, for me, we're doing that movie. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so Jamie, I don't even think it's a horror movie. I'm not really sure. But Jamie Lee, you she's 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 royalty, man. Yeah, she's the scream queen, and even then, Randy does reference her as the scream queen later. So it's like, I love shit like that. Um, that's a great scene, by the way, because you know Randy does get confronted by Stu and Billy, and okay, spoiler, 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 spoiler. The killers in this movie. Ooh, did I already say it right away? Ghostface is not one killer. He is two killers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, (laughs) Are you going to say it? I am. I'm just kind of building the suspense. Oh, okay. (laughs) It's Stu and Billy. They are the killers. They are both Ghostface. That's what's kind of cool because in the mo- in the movie they do kind of do a, a, a switcheroo a false death of Billy because he is the most obvious right yeah and they do this like false death so you're like oh shit I thought it was Billy the whole time because you're playing who done it at home yeah and you and the movie really leans on certain characters at certain points in the in the film mm-hmm. and I again I remember my dad's reaction he was just a sucker for all of it like he's like <laughs> oh it's Dewey. It's 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 the officer. It's him. It's the police guy because they lean on him so hard for a good ten minutes of the film, and then all chaos is breaking loose at the end. But yeah, it ends up to be these two guys. And again, you're playing a who done it. This guy, this guy, this girl, whoever. And then it's two of them. But one thing I would love to play is to watch the movie with you and I, mm-hmm. and figure out who the killer is because I don't know if they did it on purpose or not. But there's points where you see Ghostface and it's like, oh, that's Stu as Ghostface or that's Billy as Ghostface. Right. The more aggressive, like, and there's like inexperience in this killer. He gets his ass kicked quite a bit. He misses the mark quite a bit. 
but there's a there's a time, especially in the end, where Ghostface gets really playful with the keys. Mm-hmm. The keys. And I was like, oh, that's Stu. And it's supposed to be Stu. Like, I think they did a really good job of kind of playing to Ghostface. And you don't even realize it until you rewatch it a bunch of times like we have. But when you do rewatch it and you do know who the killers are and you do watch this video store scene, yeah. it's so obvious that Stu and Billy are the killers just of how they're, re- they're interacting with Randy. So that's a huge moment for me. But I also got to talk about the Dark Horse MVP of this movie. Okay. Which is? Uh, I talked to you about how my brother was my horror movie compadre right yeah. him and i watched all the movies together but they have to be these types of movies right yeah um there is a scene okay so they go to school after the first kill and um real quick folks there's a backstory because uh sydney one year ago almost to the day had lost her mother uh who was murdered who uh they thought was by uh, Cotton Weary, who's played by Liev Schreiber. Yes. And uh, there's a little video clip of it. And he is, uh, he was sleeping with her, you know. Sydney's mom was not a saint, was uh, stepping around now, t- you know, around town. And she's like, okay, my mother was killed. I'm having to come to terms with that. But this is the person that I saw leaving my house. Mm-hmm. So that's who the killer is. Okay. So she's having to deal with that trauma. Now, once this murder happens, there's a lot of like, stuff coming up so like people are you know running around as ghost faces at, you know in the, in the hallways and such like that so it's like it's really like you know kind of traumatizing her a little bit plus she's like she got attacked by ghost face herself yeah and she thinks that billy's the killer okay the dark horse steel scene of the entire movie is henry winkler <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Shut up! You don't even know, dude. You are you kidding? That move, that part uh, is awesome. He is hilarious. I need your attention now, kids. <laughs> he is the blatant comedy in the movie. He's so it's the Fonz, folks. It's the Fonz, and it's like for me, that's the only time I had seen him outside the Fonz personally. Mm. I mean, just because you know, I, Happy Days were running at, at like TV late at night, and I was watching him. So yeah. he's the principal. And he gets the kids who were running around, you know, and gets them in his office and has the most ridiculously large scissors. (laughs) And he is going to threaten these kids. He's like, you're both expelled. Get out of here. And they're like, come on, sir. That was not fair. It was just a joke. And he's like, you're right. You're right. Close the door. Of course he closes the door. And then he gives them a good what's for. He gives them the business. He's like, Fair would be to rip you to shreds, hang you up and so we could see and expose your guts so we could see what heartless little shits that you are. And he's like threatening them with these huge freaking scissors. And it's like, you can't do that. But I'm glad you did. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's not even the scene. It's the scene where he dies. Why? Because my brother and I, I'm talking about my brother. He and I laugh so much at this scene. Okay. Uh, the principal has one of those uh, cabinets where he has a mirror inside. So he's got the mask on and he's looking at the cabinet, right? And he's like, whoa, right? He's scared himself. And then he gets a knock at the door, right? And he like, takes it off. And he, okay, you also have to realize his hair is feathered. It's very feathered and it's very quaff, you know, kind of like uh, uh, White Goodman in Dodgeball. Mm-hmm. It's awesome, right? And he answers the door. Yes. Hello? Right? He left the cabinet doors open. So he, you're seeing him come back into the room. <laughs> through the reflection of the mirror and when he turns around he looks at the mirror he's holding the ghost face mask and he scares the shit out of himself he's like (laughs) jeez it's not even that part it's the part right after because he goes (sighs) (laughs) he (laughs) fixes his hair (laughs) so my brother and i have done that so many times just getting scared and just be like shit (laughs) <laughs> all right fix the hair how's the hair doing so i love that scene and then obviously you know he it, does die it well it leads to the most comical scene which was like the blatant one which oh, right, right. is wes craven dressed as freddy from nightmare on, elm street. nightmare on elm street but he's the janitor and he's a normal dude but he's wearing the okay. fedora and the sweater and he's mopping up <clears throat> and it's such a blatant like what the hell was that? Yeah, because because he, he opens the door because they knock on it again and he's like, you little shits. And F- Wes as Freddie or as Fred, he's like, what'd you call me? He's like, not you, Fred. Not you, Fred. So, you know, that's obviously 
he's trying to be Freddy Krueger, but anyway, I mean, he, there's a whole backstory that you can go into that is the actual, like, Freddy, who is just like, you know, this was Freddy. Anyway, it's it's funny. It's funny. So. They actually shot a uh, the couple versions of this, and it's like Wes Craven, like, slipping and sliding as Freddy, it, the janitor, he actually falls down. And he was just like, this is ridiculous. It wasn't even like his idea. It was like everyone on set. Of course. And it's the actual sweater from his collection. Really? Yeah. That, oh. So there, there's your other fun fact for the, for that scene. That's great. Um, one of the other production things I want to talk about was Stu, how he was cast. I don't know if you know this, but no, I don't. Uh, they were trying to, they had like the casting office and uh, Matthew Lillard's girlfriend was actually in for another film across the hall from the scream auditions and the casting director came out and saw him matthew lillard and said you look right for this role come audition didn't even know who he was just said like come on in and that's how i mean you're an actor so you probably are pissed by that but Very. that's how we got Stu in this film but well, that's bullshit <laughs> anyway it, I mean, he was an actor, and so it, it. And I love Stu in this movie, to be honest. I mean, uh, look, the, Stu is is. Um, I think uh, as as it's funny because when the, when it came out, you're hearing about the people who actually did go and watch it and stuff, and how much they're like, "Oh my god, Billy!" You know, Skeet Ulrich. Oh my god, blah blah blah. Right? He was like a huge heartthrob, but it's like as you get older, you find your your things that you identify with more kind of changing yeah. and he's getting like so I, I think they i don't think people have come around to randy yet, but Stu's getting this very much you know appreciation for uh matthew lillard's portrayal of him and yeah uh son of a bitch beating his dick. <laughs> you don't believe people have come around on randy i think because i like i said bold statements Randy is so important to horror films I now. Think, I think they do, and this is a spoiler for the future, folks, but they do, uh, and w by the way, what do we intend to do when we say that? Like, do they, we, this is a spoiler, to shut the fuck, shut it off or whatever, or yeah. I think we're just giving them a heads up, right? Well, yeah, if you don't want the movie ruined for you, if you haven't seen it, then that's what the spoiler alert, uh, like I said, for Hereditary, that's why I had to put the spoiler alert. Oh, okay, sure. You sure, have sure. to have the experience. Yeah. By this point, most people have seen Scream and they want our take on it. So. Right, but like I was going to tell you about the sequels. I think it's because you, you by the third or fourth sequel, you find yourself kind of like, oh, but I think that's why we went back to Lori and her story with Jamie Lee Curtis in the new Halloween is because it's like, yeah, there's some things that just like, you know, resonate more with you. And I think that, you know, you don't want Stu's, and in this case, we're talking about specifically Randy, he meets his demise in part two and you're like, oh, he would have been cool as the, uh, he's the herald basically of the, of the whole thing. He's like the, uh, I think that's what it, what his character was intended to be. He's the one that he's the information giver, right? And you yeah. kind of want him there. And even then, when they cut, anyway, uh, we'll get there on the screen. Yeah, for you years. just you miss. I think you miss him because of how great he was at the time. That's all. well because every movie is a commentary, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's supposed to expose the horror film and the facts and the sequels, the trilogies, and all that kind of stuff. And Randy always brings that, so it, it was important. But that's what this whole movie was about: was exposing the horror film and making a new version of the horror film. And Scream sparked a million fucking horror films. Excuse my language. Horror films at that point. I mean, we had Valentine. We had all these. All these movies and urban legends, and um, I know you did last summer, which I know was based on the '80s book that was written. Oh. But uh, all those movies started to come out because of Scream, so we had a whole new generation of horror films and slasher flicks and all this kind of stuff because of Scream exposing you. We can have smart kids. We can have a scary movie. We yeah. can we can do all of these things. So Scream really did that. Um, well. I, I and I wholeheartedly agree, and uh, I feel like we are getting to the point where we're gonna, you know, try to keep going. Uh, we've been talking about this for a while, but I do have to talk about a specific death. Ooh, which one? Uh, Tatum. All oh, right. <clears throat> uh, that's Lance's girl. You know, <laughs> um, Lance's girl, Rose McGowan. Uh, character's name is Tatum, and that's Sydney's best friend. So they're having, and the sister to and sister to uh, uh, Dwight Dewey. Dewey, who we, we, we barely mentioned, just save his mustache. Uh, holy shit. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Because I've been, I was, I was sitting on it. Okay, then sit on it a little while. Longer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Tatum, right? 
uh, they're at this party and uh, Stu asks her to go get some beer, right? And she goes and gets her beer and she's very excited um, to get the beer. Uh, so she goes into the garage where the beer is, yeah. right? And <laughs> Oh, no. I'm sorry, man. I can't think of a garage death scene without thinking about my own personal trauma. Anyway, I will continue with the death scene and then tell you about a quick story about myself. So, uh, she gets confronted with Ghostface and she holds her own. She starts throwing beer bottles at him to like, you know, cause she thinks, oh gosh, uh, you know, she plays along cause she thinks it's like Randy and or Stu. Yeah. And at the same time, it's, it, it was, it should have been Billy. Cause like, what, you know, you can't ask Stu to kill his own girl, but at the same time, it didn't matter. Well, he had a thing with Casey. Remember she, he got dumped by Casey. That's why he killed her. Yeah. Oh, okay. So in any case, uh, she's trapped in the garage. She, she's getting away from Ghostface, and like she had opened the door, and she's about to go, but he closes the door, so it's closing, right? But there's a cat door, uh, or you know, a pet door at the bottom of the garage door. So she decides it's probably going to be my best survival only way chance out. to get out by going through this door. So um, she's a little top heavy, so she's not going to fit. But uh, even though she technically did, right? She was life. so out of there, dude. Yeah. But you know, it's funny because like when it's her and versus the stunt woman, um, they're in. Like R Rose is pretty much out the door, out out the the cat door. Um, but the stunt person is like only up to the head. It's funny. It's, it's, uh, Rose was in there for a good chunk of it. She has a bunch of bruises. And what I'm saying is, is like, they progress out. Okay. It's just the way it's cut. Yeah. Yeah. You know, anyway, so she's stuck in there, right? Tatum is stuck in there and he presses the garage, uh, button and the garage starts going up. Uh -huh. She gets all the way to the top. She, she's stuck. She can't avoid it. And it goes all the way to the top and it crushes her in the top. Pretty gruesome scene. Pretty too. gruesome scene. Here's why it's bullshit. Because <laughs> I might have been in uh, fifth grade, maybe, maybe fourth. And my brother's outside and he's doing stuff, right? And he's always doing stuff outside. And I just, I'm inside with my sandwich cut into four pieces, probably watching Power Rangers, right? Just having a good time in my life, right? And all I hear is, and we're like, we're there. I think, uh, I don't know if we were there by ourselves or whatever, or my, or my, anyway, the point is that he was playing with the garage door. And what he was doing was he was closing it, pressing the button, running down and laying to where he can grab it. And the garage door was taking him up and he was flying essentially, right? <laughs> Superman, he was calling it. And I was like, what is this going on? I'd already finished my sandwich and two more after that. So then I looked through the door and I see what he's doing. And he sees me watching and he's like, you come here. Right. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to because it's hot outside. You know, it's Texas. So I go out. And I'm like, what? What's going on? He's like, hey, I don't want to keep on running. Press the button for me. Fine. So I'm the button presser at this point. So he's laying down, holding the garage, and I'm pressing it. And we do this for like four or five times, and it's awesome. You know, to the point where we're small enough that he's pretty much off the ground. So you let go, you fall. And he's like, oh, cool, cool. And I'm like, wow, that was really good, Henry. Awesome. I'm going to go now. He's like, nah, it's your turn. No, nah, I don't want to do it. Come on, it's your turn. Do it. It's fun. I don't want to. I don't want to go in the garage. Danny, if you don't do it, I'm going to, I'm going to kick your ass. It's always like the go-to thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fine. So close the garage. I lay down like him. I have never been able to do a push up or a pull up at all in my life. I can do push ups now. I'm actually very accomplished, but pull ups have still eluded me. So he's like, just hold on and go with the flow. All right. Presses the button. There I go. And I have like a Rose McGowan, uh, Rose from Titanic, not Rose McGowan, but a Kate Winslet moment. I'm like, I'm flying. I get maybe half a foot off the ground and the garage da -da 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 -da, -sh, slant sideways falls broken. And I fall to the ground and I'm doing one of those like, you know, like when you break the window, you're like, huh? What? What? And I'm looking around and my brother's by the wind, by the button made me do this, Lance. And he goes, whew, you're in trouble. <laughs> anyway, that's my garage story. Why I was like, why is she being able to get taken all the way to the top, her and my brother only, and not me? Oh, poor Danny. Okay. I'm so sorry, bud. It's fine.
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it happened. It's not. It's not fake. It really happened. Oh well, my girl Rose McGowan is now out of the picture. She gone. Tatum is gone, and we move. What I love about the end of the scene is Ghostface in full costumes, like, oh, that was that worked, and yeah. then he kind of like opens the door, sneaks back into the party, and we yeah. still have no idea who it is. What have we been sitting on, Danny? We've been sitting on the other amazing heartthrob of the 90s that is in this movie. Courtney Cox as Gail Weathers. And before we get into her, I just want to say what her character adds and what the movie did so well was making it a big picture thing. Yeah. So many slasher films that we've talked about, it's always small town, uh, these moments of like... Uh, the the small town cops there's only two or three of them yeah. this is big news after the first murder we've got news crews in town we've got sheriffs everywhere there's cop cars everywhere this is a bigger city mm -hmm. town or bigger town than what we're used to in slasher films and then inner gail weathers who also has a tie into sydney's past right because uh we did mention that sydney's mom was murdered and it was the hot you know, story of that year as Gail does tell Sydney. Yeah. Cause they went through the trial. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, you know, it's about the trial and the, you know, this is the nineties. So like the trial is very much like the trial is like a thing in, um, in the real world. Yeah. Uh, and she, yeah, she, she has her own misconception or like, uh, her own theories talking about Gail towards, cotton and if he was the killer at all so there's like a bad blood between sydney and gail but that does set it up that's like she's like of course i'm going to be on the scene when a year later these murders are starting up again gotta talk about it and you know um i love that because they're it's not just a reporter it's a reporter that has history already right. to the area to woodsboro yeah and it just amps things up it's a bigger stage for a slasher than I feel like we've really seen before. It's always small town and all this kind of stuff, but now it's a bigger stage. Oh. There's already history there and Gail Weathers needs to get the scoop because she's got the scoop before she has a history and Sydney hates Gail Weathers so much as she punches her in the freaking face. Yeah. And Courtney Cox uh, lobbied for this role. She wanted to be a part of this. She was not cast for this originally. Uh, there's a few other people that were already cast. Uh, she begged and begged and begged and they finally took the, I guess the risk. I mean, she was popular on friends at this point that series had she already? blown up. Yeah. That came out in 94. This is 96 okay. and this didn't start shooting until June. So we probably had three seasons or so friends is already blown up, okay. but she's a TV star. That's always a transitional thing. I mean, like you're going to get to work with Wes Craven at the time. Like, uh, it sucks folks, but like dimension is pretty big, you know, like they're doing some big shit. You know, Miramax is a big company. Um, owned by a pig, but it's, you know, it is what it is. So it's like, it is attractive that, you know, it's not just another horror movie. It's not, it's a horror movie that has really decent footing, basically. It was the screenplay that apparently just took Hollywood by storm. I mean, that's what I, I've read and that, that's what I've seen on the documentaries and all this kind of stuff is everyone knew about this screenplay and everyone wanted to be a part of this film. Would you say it was a screenplay? Ha! Huh. Scream. Was it Scream? Yeah. At this point, it wasn't called Scream. It was called Scary Movie. Isn't that funny that they ended up making the spoofs called Scary Movie? It's hilarious. Do they get uh, uh, royalties for being spoofed on? Do you do you know? I don't think so. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think so. But they didn't change the name of this film until after it was cut and ready to be released. They changed the name to Scream. Scream is so... It's such a great name. It's such a great name for a movie, uh, especially the franchise. What I am, um, you know, and I think we're going to have to start wrapping this up, but like what I'm more excited about at this point when I'm watching this movie, I'm like, oh my God, yes, you can totally make sequels from this. And the killer is, but even then, I, I wasn't sold on the look of Ghostface in the beginning. I'm going to be honest um, with you. I, 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 there's something about simplicity, right? Yeah. And he's the closest thing to, I think it's a nod to Michael Myers. We had kind of talked about like, you thought you had seen this costume. They actually built this costume through the movie, but the mask was by the location scout in one of the houses. She was scouting the location. She goes up to the upper floor as an older woman's house and she sees the kid's room and the kids had already moved out, but there was a mask just like this hanging up on the bedpost. 
and they had been they had been sculpting some bizarre yeah. looks for uh for scream it was like punker zombies and all this like weird kind of stuff and then they found this and they tried to sculpt it many different times they had a green one they had like all these different colors and stuff yeah. and it was west craven kind of said like it just doesn't hit as well as the original so make it you know super blatant but um the ro- the black robe is what they created they covered them head to toe which was not the original plan um that black sheen which really helps you know kind of yeah help them glow in certain scenes and all this kind of stuff they were originally going to make them white all white oh yeah that would have been ridiculous ridiculous and also kind of controversial you, you know in certain shots um, oh sure, sure sure so they actually created this based on an old school mask and I think I love the simplicity of it. That's what works all the time. I guess it's because of the, and this is just me at the time being so narrow minded and, you know, expecting that my killers have to be like these beefed up because by this point, Michael to me is I'm more synonymous, synonymous with him being, you know, um, blockhead and shit, you know, like he's <laughs> huge at this point, And so is Jason. So like, I don't know. Um, but you know what? You know what? I'll, I'll backtrack and I'll actually eat my words a little bit because they do get their 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 licks in on Ghostface and they affect him. So yeah, I do appreciate that because like when yeah. she's th- like when Tatum's throwing the bottles, when when Sydney uh, kicks him, he goes flying. Not <laughs> I'll get to this in the sequel, but anyway, like uh, I think that's probably what's grown on me about this character more is that he will take again his licks he will and and they will be effective you know uh there's not a zombie no. in, you know you can't hurt him there is a little bit of supernatural to him in the sense of like you know one bullet to the chest usually won't kill him yada 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 but uh, or her um but that's you know that's the point um uh, it didn't it, it, it grew on me but it wasn't my favorite in the beginning the look I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just me being a little young sexist pig, but I have evolved. So I, there's supposed to be a simplicity about it. They mentioned it in the movie that it's at every, this costume is at every five and dime in the state or county or whatever. Every five and dime in the state. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dewey. Uh, I mean, they lean really hard on Dewey being the killer at one point too. By the way, which he's just—he's supposed to be a Barney Fife kind of guy. And um, also, there's a funny part where Tatum and Dewey are brother and sister. So uh, Sydney, oh, no. surviving from the first attack, is going to stay over at Tatum's. Right? She's you know out of the hospital, and Dewey is also living there. So you know, she just punched Gail Weathers talking about Sydney, and they're there, you know, hanging out in Tatum's room. And he, you know, Dewey brings her some eyes, gets some eyes for that right hook. Right. This is, is this is where David Arquette and Courtney Cox got together, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. On this movie. I mean, come on, how can you not? Uh, but um, you know, he go he's like, oh, I'm gonna be right next door if you need anything. <laughs> right. So she gets a call there at Tatum's house, and it's the killer, and they're banging on Dewey's door. Dewey! Dewey! And he never comes out for a guy that said, I'm gonna be right there next door if you need anything. They have to pound on his door over and over again then he finally comes out what holding the gun in his underwear basically <laughs> and <laughs> i was watching it recently obviously with with uh, my fiance and she was like what is dewey doing in there <laughs> what is he doing and i'm like yeah dewey's you know r- relaxing <laughs> yeah he's yeah he, uh... But what the best part is that he after the phone calls over everything he's done. already hung it up he picks it up hello I know he gives it like his best. <laughs> Hello. Like he's gonna he's gonna get the he's gonna get go anyway. Again, there's like some blatant comedy in there that now when I rewatch it, I'm like, oh that was they were trying to make this more funny than I think it really comes off because I think it's written so well and I think the characters come off so well that you're like, yeah, oh, yeah there, there was supposed to be comedy to this. So, you know, uh, uh I gotta talk about one scene that I know you love because oh, it's it's that twilight that you've talked about oh, yeah. and it rub- it takes me back to being a, a kid after school you have the nap and it's the twilight that danny has talked about in numerous other shows that we've done it's the time of the day when the day is ending the night is beginning there's this mysterious time it's the worst time to take a nap and wake up in the darkness Dude. and i used to do it all the time and they nailed this scene. So, Danny, I'm going to let you go off on it. Dude, first of all, the scene be damned. You are a beautiful man. <laughs> Do you don't even understand? I was watching it recently. 
Mm-hmm. And I, it happens and I go, that's the time. Yeah. I tell my fiance, I tell her, I tell Caitlin, I was like, that's the time. And she's like, oh yeah. I'm like, that's the time I've been talking about. Nailed and it. I didn't even tell you that I wanted to talk. That- no. I, I, the- okay. So it's not dusk. The- no. And it, it is, it is the twilight. It is that right. And it's, a, it, they, it, they capture this moment perfectly because I said when it's like the sun is setting and the light is leaving, it's like, here comes the danger. Yeah. And it's like, you don't want it to leave, but you're in that in-between time. And it is, there is a killer on the loose and there goes the sunlight and you're basically last chance at being able to fight this in the day. Yeah. And why I related to it and it's why I got the scene. I had to bring it up because I know you love it so much, but it's that the fact that she falls asleep in this and it reminds me so much of my teenage years after school, I was exhausted, you know, and I always fall asleep at that exact moment. And if nobody was home and I would wake up alone in the dark house, no lights are on because it was sunlight, but when you fell asleep and then you wake up and it's completely pitch black and you're like, Oh my God, where am I? Well, oh, who's yeah. in here with me? You know, yep. and you just automatically have the paranoia and that's why I connected to this one specifically yep. more than any of the others that we've talked about before. And we will continue to talk about You nailed it, man. You absolutely nailed it. They nailed it, but you nailed it in the sense of this is it. This is it, folks. This is absolutely it. It's that terrible feeling of falling asleep and knowing that like there was sun when it just happened to me recently because we went and ran some errands and stuff and we were exhausted. So we got back and it was like, you know, four or something. And then, you know, I kind of fell asleep on the couch. And when I woke up, the sun was still out, but barely. Yeah. I freaked out <laughs> yeah. Just to make myself know. Yeah. I was like, do something, do something, do something. Everything's fine. I like started playing the game. Everything's fine. I have to- so much time of the day Yeah. But because of that is ingrained in me. And then imagine getting a phone call from the killer that's on the loose. I you was going to say like, you know, it, it happens a couple of times in this movie where people wake up and they wake up to terror. Yeah. If you... <laughs> Caitlin knows about waking me up. If you wake me up because like, Hey, there's something or whatever. It is worse than what is probably there yeah. waking me up because yeah. that's always like, a, a it's always a, a show me yeah. waking up. Right. Cause I'm dead asleep and I'm probably not making, you know, flattering noises cause it is what it is. And it's like, uh, right. And then she and I'm like, huh? What? What's happening? Right. I'm, don't wake me up next time then if if, <laughs> if, if that's gonna be, this fucking thing's gonna hit me if that's gonna be my reaction right but it's it's already traumatic traumatic it's already a thing to be woken up like that so can you imagine that you get woken up you're like huh what hello i'm gonna kill you oh okay <laughs> what you know what i'm saying that's not, it's not, it's, well, she it, had a moment because Tatum's the one that calls her first. She has a moment that you just kind of described where you wake up and like, everything's fine. Okay. I, yeah. I'm starting to get my bearings. My friend just called me. She's on her way. Whew, okay. And then you hang up the phone and then ring, ring right away. Now it's the killer. Wait, where are my bearings? You know? Exactly. And I, you know, I love the, where the scene goes because we start to see that she's got, she's, she's a brave girl. She goes outside. She, Absolutely. you know, the killer tells her like, I'm right outside or something, you know, I mean, so. She's a little bit hardened, right? I mean, like you go through shit, you know, you get affected by it in certain ways. And yeah. I think uh, the death of her mom is kind of, uh, you know, it's hardened her a little bit, you know, because I mean, personally, I'd probably be a wreck if it's only a year. I mean, I wouldn't even, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But like she is pretty put, but there's still chinks in the armor, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and I hope that was politically correct. And I'm so sorry if it's not. But uh, the point is, is that she is, yeah, she's very brave. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think that's what's so interesting about the Sydney Prescott heroine is why people so, love it so much. You know, they put her up there with Lori and they put her up there with uh, Heather Langenkamp, you know, even though they, you know, kind of Heather didn't, you know, last as long as the other two, uh, you know, Sydney has, and has really, you know, stood her ground and, and really gone through a lot of trauma you know, as, as the series goes on, she gets even worse and worse and worse. It only gets worse for her. And Bo to see that she's coming back for another another traumatic experience. Who who knows what's going to happen? So yeah, but even at the the very end of it, and let's push down to the end now. She flips the tables on yeah. the boys. I mean, she gets away from them. She puts the mask on. She calls them and starts to terrorize right. these two killers, Stu and Billy, who have kind of 
you know, kind of unfolded what their plot was, how they planned on getting away with this. But remember, she had been holding on to her uh, virginity. Yeah. And, you know, she has a moment where she believes it's not Billy and she believes that she just wants to like, you know, she wants to take, you know, that power back from, I guess, maybe feeling helpless with the killer or whatnot. And she's like, I believe it's not you. And, you know, her and Billy have sex and she loses her virginity. So if you are believing the rules, you think she's going to die. Yeah. And she flips the script. She broke the rules and in a sense still overcame them. It was, it was it's, it's glorious. Yeah. I, I, and again, this, this movie, these guys do have a motive. Billy has a relationship or well, his dad had a relationship with Sydney's mom and oh, his, right, his mom cotton. left it, him. It wasn't cotton. These guys did kill Sydney's mom. Yeah. And they actually filmed a version of this where he doesn't have all of that. So it was just a, oh, I'm not into motives, which he does say, but then the continuation of that, they don't have uh, when he gives his motive. Stu has a surprise look. Yeah. On Cause his Stu face. hadn't even heard that. You know it. Yeah. And, and the point is that, is that they start cutting each other up because they're the two survivors from this whole thing. Yeah. They're framing her dad with the murder. It's a scream baby. Yes. Um, which Randy had already said, he's the red herring, you know, it's not really him. like, there's just so much commentary and so much fun with this. But at the very end, I love when Stu starts to get loopy and he says some <laughs> of the funniest lines in the movie when he's been cut so deep, he's starting to bleed out. Obviously he got cut way too deep. He's going to die, but he starts to get really loopy and say the funniest shit, their phone rings. And it's my favorite line of the whole movie. He turns to Billy and he's like, uh, you know, bleeding out like. Should I let the machine get it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite that is a funny line. line. Like That's the whole great. the whole movie, everyone answers the phone, and then it's almost a commentary in itself. Like, should I just let the machine get it? Like, why am I answering the phone at yeah. this point? I, I die laughing every I time think I hear I'm it. Dying here, man. Oh like, man. That's, yeah, Matthew Lillard, and it really. That, I think they stuck the landing at the end here. Um, Here's the thing. When you think of who the killers are, you're like, oh shit, that's obvious. But then even the reveal, you're like, oh, I don't feel cheapened. I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like they took anything from me, even though the most obvious was that it was the the boyfriend. They take it to, cause they do a false death where he like gets killed by Ghostface, but it was all planned so that Sydney, I guess, could let her guard down. And you're like, oh shit, it isn't Billy. He, what he's supposed to be the killer. And then he is, ends up being the killer. And you're like, oh yeah, that was cool. That's yeah. Cool. I, no, you're, I, not, you're not mad about it. You're like, oh, it was the most obvious guy the whole time. You're actually okay with it. I yeah. mean, me personally, I was. It's him. It's Stu. And I just, I love it, man. Like you took care of everything. And, and again, Stu has a reaction to Billy saying like, you know, your mom was screwing my dad and my mom left me. And Stu goes like, oh shit, you got a motive. And Sydney even presses that like, what's your motive, Stu? And Stu's like, oh, my mom's going to be so mad at me. Peer pressure. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's just, so, so. You know, uh, obviously, Sydney, with the help of Gail and for a little a little bit, Randy, uh, they are able to overcome both. Um, but mostly Sydney is able to uh, over uh, you know, subdue the killers and uh, they survive. And it's great. It's great. It, it ends on a on a uh, Gail Weathers kind of going, you know, back into her professional mode and she's going to cover like, you know. It all, you know, happened in this quiet ranch house in the, you know, in this but I was always jealous of that house. I was like, oh, that oh, house yeah. is awesome because it's like, it's, you know, it looks like it's a bit in the wine country. I don't know exactly where that was filmed. Uh, it was, um, I was going to say Santa Mira. It's actually Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. Yeah. Which is Saint Rosa. Uh, <laughs> there was, there was controversy in the town. They did not want this in their high school and it wasn't filmed in the high school. Oh, really? The whole town was used but the school board came down on the movie and said, you can't use our high school. And okay. there, there's big backlash on that. Um, but yeah, these houses there, there was other horror films filmed there. I'm not sure, sure certain on what they were, but um, right, right across from Tatum's house, there's a big one, but this town, like it just had a little bit of everything. We also forgot to mention, I mean, Gail Weathers actually saves the day in the very end. Yeah. She, she takes out Billy on his last hurrah. Yeah. That's what um, I'm saying. Like, uh, there. So, so there's that connection. Like, yes. yeah, she does go right back into it. She's battered and beaten, but now she's partaken in the story. She killed or she shot one of the killers and, and helped I Sydney. Mean, you, you would think that, yes, because Sydney and Gail don't like each other or Sydney really doesn't like Gail again. I think Gail is just kind of blinded by 
uh, success. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's that kind of moment where, you know, Gail kind of does a solid for everybody and including Sydney. And Sydney's like, Oh, you know what? Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. You, you know, I didn't like the way you covered the story, but now I know the truth and you were just, you ended up being right the whole time. Yeah. Because Cotton wasn't the killer. Oh man, this, what a ride, what a ride folks. Thank you. If you did stay with us the whole time, uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to watch this in bits, I mean, encourage that too. Um, but when it's a movie like this, Lance, you yeah. got, you got to take your time. This is the, really the second franchise that we're really getting into. And this was kind of the idea of slash paradise was to hit the franchises first. Yeah. Well, we are going to, we, and, we're, we're going to tackle the entire franchise. I don't think that, uh, the rest of them, uh, will be as in depth as this one. Cause this one, I mean, it launched, it changed the game. It did change the game. You're right. Yeah. That is, that's probably the best way to put it because like, I mean, look at this. Look at this. Look at it. I have a ghost face mug. You know, he's got the shirt. ghost face, the shirt, el ghost face or whatever. And here is the mask. I mean, like we're talking about, I mean, I'm eating every time. I, here's the thing. Every icons. Time icons is what I we're talking eat about. Jiffy pop or find or see Jiffy pop in the stores. I think of scream. So there's that. Absolutely. It is an iconic film. Um, I mean, we could probably go on another two hours about it, but I'm sure. But we're folks, not going to. Yes, please watch Scream. Uh, watch anything involved with uh, maybe the spinoffs. There was a TV series for MTV. All this stuff, you know, and a new one is coming out. So uh, get ready for that. Danny, how many Jiffy Pops do you give Scream? Five. Absolutely, I give it a five as well. It is iconic. Definitely must watch. Again, watch it once at least with all the lights off. Get into it. Sound up. Don't be on your phones. Get some Jiffy Pop. You know, always do in a circular motion. Don't burn it because these things are tricky, but it's fun. It's like a show. Yeah. Any hoozle. <laughs> anyway, that is Scream for us. That's Danny. I'm Lance reminding you to lock your doors, bolt your windows, and what's your favorite scary movie? And join us next time in our Slasher's Paradise. The red right here. Hey! Thank you everyone for watching Slasher's Paradise tonight. Please go down to the subscribe button right down here and click subscribe. And make sure you turn on your notifications so that you know when we go live next time on YouTube. Danny. And if you prefer an audio version, look us up on Apple Podcasts, find Slasher's Paradise, listen to us, obviously, and leave a five-star rate and review. If you don't know what to say, go ahead and put in a request of a movie you'd like for us to talk about. We'd love to hear what you think, guys. Yes, please. And if you would love to see more of our beautiful faces, head to facebook.com slash dead candy fix dead candy is the producer of Slasher's Paradise, and we will see you there and we will see you next time. Here's to you guys. This is Slasher's Paradise. Sorry, I had to work that in. And I'm going to drink on that.